I am so excited for today. This is Cameron Toth. My name is Cameron Toth. This is Biz Dev Live. I have the honor of hosting Mr. Darren Kaplan, Mr. Mortgage Guru today. We're going to be answering your questions. For the folks that are on LinkedIn Live, I'm hoping you're tuning in. This is the first ever LinkedIn Live as I've gotten uh, approval to go on LinkedIn Live. So we're streaming to LinkedIn, YouTube, to Twitter, to Facebook. So let me know in the comments that you're here, you're riding with us. Give me lots of clappy signs. Give me lots of uh, interest, uh, curious, wherever you are. Want your feedback, love your comments, want your questions. We're going to be talking about mortgages. We're going to be talking about real estate. We're going to talk about finance, recession proofing your life today. We're going to get all into all that and more with Mr. Darren Kaplan right after the biz dev theme. Biz Dev Live, live. weekdays at 11 Eastern Time. time. Biz Dev Live, live. weekdays at 11 Eastern Time. time. Biz D with C, C. brought to you by Cameron T. T. Biz D with C. C, brought to you by Cameron T. T. This is business development, not even selling it. This is intelligent. If you watch it, I promise you benefit. Leadership and motivation, empathy and inspiration. Leadership and motivation, empathy and inspiration. Biz Dev Live, live. weekdays at 11 Eastern Time. time. Biz Dev Live, live. weekdays at 11 Eastern Time. time. Biz D with C. C, brought to you by Cameron T. T. Biz D with C. C, brought to you by Cameron T. T. So I'm so excited. We got Darren Kaplan here. I'm going to go through the bio here. I'm going to put him big on the screen. Make sure you're sharing, uh, liking, uh, getting the hit and up with some comments in there. Uh, love to hear what you have to say. Love to hear your comments and questions. Mr. Darren Kaplan at Mr. Mortgage Guru anywhere online. Hashtag Mr. Mortgage Guru. You're going to find him on YouTube with over 4,000 plus subscribers, father of three, mortgage professional for over 20 years, has over 180 reviews on Zillow.com. Darren Kaplan wants to share ideas on becoming economy and recession proof with you for your future. Today, we're going to get into it. Thanks for being on the show, Mr. Darren Kaplan. All right. Got to come off. The scene you. was amazing. Uh, we got you off mute now. We're good. All right. So t talk talk to us uh, a little bit about what you're currently doing to help people. Um, talk to us a little bit about the YouTube channel, and then we'll kind of dig into more of the story. Yeah, I mean, mo most importantly, you know, I'll introduce myself. I'm Darren Kaplan. Um, I work for Total Mortgage. Um, we are a Zillow verified lender. I have over 180 reviews on Zillow. I have over 5,000 subscribers to my YouTube channel. All right. I have over 20 years experience in the mortgage industry. I'm 41 years old. So I've been doing this <laughs> over half my life. Um, I have, uh, three kids, a 30 year old, a 15 year old and an eight year old. And, um, we went through some hard times over the last 20 years and I want to educate, motivate and inform people right now of what's really out there how to make a change, how to become economy proof, how to become recession proof, the, the real tools in life that you need without having to really go through that, you know? And I think that that's the message we're trying to send, Cameron. All right, you so know? tell us what uh, little little Darren wanted to be when he was growing up. <laughs> you know, I told you about that before too. You know, it's I'm 41 years old, I'll be 42 this year. And um, I'm not entirely sure yet, but I know that, this industry has taken a huge turn from from the early 2000s to even post 2008, 2009 with the new technology coming in um, in the in the roaring 20s here. Um, I just I want to educate people. I want to motivate people. I want to inform people. So as long as I can continue to do that, I mean, I love dogs. <laughs> they're, they're my passion and my pride. My my little boy, Einstein, he's a mini schnauzer that is what makes me happy. But I don't know if I could ever, um, I can never actually fulfill and live and pay my bills that way. So how, how can you do that? As I explain, how do you become what you want? And, and, um, listen, real estate and, and mortgages always be in my blood because I grew up in an office building, right? Technically in my twenties and my thirties, you know, right out of college. I, that, that's what I did. So, um, what I didn't you, what experience did you go to college that. for 
man, I didn't even know. I was never really educated in that field where somebody said, hey, you should sit down. This is what you're good at, Darren. And, and you know, go with it. It was always... It was always like I'm going to deal with people in the phone sales industry. That's what I did as a younger, you know, 16, 17. I mean, I got in the business at 20, so it's <laughs> it's kind of hard to, you know, experience that adult life, right? When, you know, I had a kid at 27. I know your story. With you, had, you had a kid young, you know, but those are the things that make you, right? Those, those responsibilities are part of economy proof. They're part of recession proof. That, well, what were the what were the lessons that you were picking up as you're going through this? So I imagine you were doing some sales heavy uh, work in terms of you know your late teens there that probably helps you to this day. But what were some of the challenges that you were going through then? So so let's start off as I I didn't come from money. Okay, I lived in the small house when all the kids had the big house. The kids were driving the BMWs. You know, I drove a twenty year old Camaro. You know, so. I guess I grew up with different morals, um, but at the same time, I tried to understand those morals along with understand myself at such a young age, right? So what what do you do, Cameron? What, you, you, you have the kid. You don't ha not have the kid, right? So you have to continue in life and understand. I can tell you this much, though. I, may, I spent way more money in the 20s and the 30s than I made. Okay, right. so that was a huge life lesson in itself, you know, going beyond your means. You know, I never really understood money. I, n I never really understood bills. I never understood if you buy a big house, what were the bills beforehand, you know, and like it comes with fixing leaky pipes and, you know, you could pay somebody or you can do it yourself, right? And I just... So I mean, you're, you're setting up a, a story here because you have you have moved to a certain degree of success uh, in your life, you've built a company, you got a lot of folks working for you, you've been able to, to bring in a lot of revenue, you're uh, hitting things up on the promotion side, you got this Mr. Mortgage guru thing going for you, uh, lots of, of, of business coming in. So what were the, some of the life lessons that you were kind of picking up uh, as you were moving through that has moved you from a place to kind of being lost in the, in, in the wilderness, uh, if you will, to you know, living within your means and, and, uh, you know, I don't know, dare I say it, killing it on the uh, business and financial side. So thinking about it in my twenties, I was killing it. Thinking about it in thirties, I was killing it, you know, early thirties. I never had the mindset that the money doesn't matter. <laughs> so once you can eliminate the fact that the money doesn't matter, now you just enjoy your job. You're, you're, you're actually, you, that's when I believe your career starts. Right. And so what, was, so what was the issue? So you were, you know, you're saying money doesn't matter, but obviously it matters, right? Because it's mm -hmm. whether you're, you're holding it up for the scoreboard or just trying to make sure you're not swimming in debt and, and, uh, uh, but you that's know, the key bringing, to it. There's bringing, no, bringing in more than you do it. There's no way to do it without the debt. So you have to incur the debt in order to get out of the debt. Right. I mean, that's like, how, how can you not do that though? How do we just live within our means, save our money? Now, it's very difficult to do here in New York, Connecticut, the tri-state area. It's nearly impossible because everything costs three times as much. But if you're in a position to buy a home here in this area and you can figure out change in your mind, hey, maybe I can have the same job, work remote, number one. Maybe not everybody ha can work remote, right? But let's think about maybe you can change your lifestyle. Let's say you're a nurse. You... You can now maybe work on a transfer. Maybe you got kids in the school. So now we're working on a long-term goal. Now we're working on five or six years, but at least you're working on it because that time will come or you'll be dead. One of the two things will happen, right? So I don't want to be 70 years old, shoveling snow, okay? I mean, straight up, man. I don't want to be doing it. You know, and, and I think that if I don't move now, my wife is older than me. She's nine years older. So my wife's turning 50 this year. I'm turning 42, right? So, so we, we just, I think if I don't do it now and plant those seeds for my kids now who can have opportunity, and this is the whole reason why I'm going to South Carolina. I'm paving the way. So if you're scared so, uh, and you don't- give, give, give people some context here. So uh, where has your business been based for the last few years? Where have you grow up? And, 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 then, and then kind of get into why you're moving to South Carolina. I'm born and raised here on Long Island. Okay. I, I, I've lived on Long Island 
my, most of my life, let's say. I lived in Florida for a short stint, but I never considered myself a Floridian. So live, so so I'm born and raised on the like, like many New Yorkers, yes. <laughs> and and since I'm 18 years old, let's say, I've had a car payment. And that's where it starts. You gotta have the nice car to stay in route on either what you do, what your hobby is, and if you're single or you're married, right? So that's where it starts. And and I just this will be the just to, to get off topic, but my car is due back today and it'll be the first time I'm handing it back and not getting a payment, not getting another car. We're going to share a car and we're going to figure it out. And that goes with economy proof. That's going to be my recession proof. You know, I'll, I'm going to figure those ends out now. Um, and, 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 and just give us a little context on that decision, because obviously you could afford it if you wanted to, you know, lease or, or buy uh, another car, right? So, hey, you got a car to get to work, right? So, I work in Green Lawn. I live in Green Lawn, which is near Huntington. I can ride my bike if I need to, but my wife can probably just drop me off in the morning and pick me up when the time comes, you know. And I think those little meetings that I have with my wife are, are kind of like those are important for us to have, and we're missing that. So why not? I love, I love that. And just to just to sprinkle a little context on this, and so many of the conversations that I have on Biz Dev Live. Yes, we're talking about business. Yes, we're talking about how you make your money, how you you know set your mindset to to walk into the business to do some of the best practices so that you can. We'll talk a little bit about real estate, a little bit about how you set yourself up for a good mortgage, right? But the idea, and I, I love it. You know, whether it's physical fitness relationships with your, your spouse, children, right? you know, building that time in and figuring out ways. So you're, you're killing essentially two birds with one stone. You're saving a little bit of money on, on the car and you're building some time in with your spouse, uh, even though that might create some <laughs> challenges uh, in, in and of it itself, you're creating some time where you got to need to rely on each other and, and build that relationship. I love it. Keep going. Definitely. And and everything that you're saying is 100% correct. So the understanding behind it is an easy concept, right? So why don't more people do it? I think that we, as a, as a whole, we look at like the negatives, you know, be positive, positive things happen to positive well, yeah, people, and, right? And, and just we'll, we'll sprinkle in some of the negatives, right? Oh, you don't have your own car. Oh, you got to ask your wife, right? So it's some of the, the stuff that other people are going to say, which Absolutely. if you're trying to get ahead, you're trying to, to live not only within your means, but in a way where, because you could spend 400, 500, 600 or more dollars a month on a car payment, Correct. or you could be investing in stocks, real estate, cryptocurrency, True. things that could actually bring more money into your bank account, right? So, so let, if we fast forward a little bit based on what you just said, right? Let's say the economy crashes again tomorrow, right? Knock on wood, it doesn't. But let's say something drastic happens in the next few years and you didn't have that car and you didn't have those extra things that you didn't need and you, you played the, the game right. Don't you think that you're going to be in the absolute best situation to buy, invest, get ahead? That's your opportunity. It's not buy high, make more money. Okay. It never was. It was work hard and retire. Okay. And, and then like, you know, I think when you come from a place of, of, of hard work, grind, you know, young, young children, my, my wife had her first kid at 18, you know, when you have that first taste of the real world, which is kids. Okay. Now, not everybody has kids and I get it right. And everybody has their own prerogative. Um, but at the end of the day, I have kids, so you can't take that away from me. Um, you just, I think your mindset completely changes. You know, when I had my daughter, I really realized I was responsible for people, you know, not just my son who can fend on his own a lot of the time, but, and I, and I, I was almost at the worst place in my life. You know, I was on the verge of bankruptcy, you know, the market, there was no mortgage market. There was no lending. I thought maybe I should try to find another hobby, you know, or, or job for say, you know, and it just, I don't groove. I don't, I don't, I don't, I feel so lost in, in like the wood shop world, you know, like, it's like, if you were to take me and put me in wood shop or auto class, like I would be so lost. But at the same time, I think at some point I would get it at this point, you know, um, you know, COVID really affected a lot of people. 
I was already trying to figure out how to make the job mobile, remote, spend more time with your family. I was already on that course. Um, I did an interview um, January 2020, just before COVID. I was talking about homeschooling your kids mm. already. Okay, make the changes. Listen, if your kid doesn't go to the greatest school and he's getting bullied, right? Maybe that's your time for change. Who cares about your job? Try to work on a transfer. And I say it so loosely because when you have no money and you have nothing coming in and your bills are high and I get it, I, I, I can... I can relate to that, you know? Um, well, and let me, and I'll sprinkle some more context on this. Cause I was thinking about things that, you know, just we're, we're reading in the news you're seeing in the world. Right. And um, it's interesting. You know, what do you place a priority on? Do you right. want to be ultra successful? Right. Do you want to have multiple businesses? You look at folks like Elon Musk, enormously successful on the outside of things, not only, an amazing company in Tesla that's changing the world. Another company on top of that, uh, uh, SpaceX, that is also changing right. the world. He's developed companies. But what's the price, right? Because everything, you know, balance doesn't sense. necessarily exist. And so, you know, has he been able to maintain uh, love in his life, relationships? So you have to decide for yourself what's more important. And, you know, it's the interesting thing because money always comes up because money is your 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 ability to move in the world, right? So if Correct. you want to go from place to place, you want to be able to go to the grocery store, you want to be able to take a vacation, you want to be able to get a car, you want to be able to write your credit, your money that's in, in your bank account. Those are some of the things that we're always in the mix with, but your priorities right. can be very different. And so you have to decide, you know, we're doing this thing on schedule for folks for uh, SR4, uh, Ignite uh, conference next week and doing a lot of thinking about the schedule and how you actually prioritize things. And so right. you know, if you're Elon Musk, you prioritize your businesses because that's your mission, right? And so no relationship, relationship comes secondary. Now, happiness, is the guy happy? You know, I mean, you got to, you know, I'm not inside Elon's head, but you got to decide for yourself what's going to make you happy. And if what's going to make you happy is, is thousand percent creating a company that's going to change the world, then you then put that focus there and don't True. worry about the rest and don't worry about what Harry says or Sally says, right? But if your priority is family, then you do what you got to do. And I love some of the kind of the no nonsense kind of tips that you're given, right? It's, you know, what can we do to save the money? What do we not need? And I think so many people need this kind of advice because so change? many people's priorities aren't, you know, making money above things. They want to have relationships with their children. They want to have relationships with their spouse. They want to have relationships with right. their family. They want to spend time, time with their family is the most important thing. So how do you build that in for the future? So sorry to, to kind of go off on that. But no, no, it, it, what you're conference. saying is totally, totally true. And like, so I, I, I feel like sometimes I miss the time with my son. He's 15 now. I, you know, I, I don't know if I knew any better, but at the same time, my focus was the bills, the bills, the bills, the bills, right? And then I realized, does this ever stop? Now, I'll probably be the only mortgage banker that talks somebody out of trying to buy a house, right? But at the same time, I'm real. You know, I'm, I'm, and I'm not trying to be convincing about it. I'm trying to tell you, listen, do you really need that? Why don't you take your 100 grand? Start over. Go down south. Have your kids live in a different environment. Let's, not let's just so many hungry driven. And let's juxtapose that because you're doing a great job with branding. For the person that you're not talking out of a mortgage, I mean, talk to us about the branding thing. You know, you move from, you know, some of the stuff in the late teens, kind of kind of being challenged with it. What's been sort of this breakthrough in branding? Uh, because now you're talking about, yes, I'm spending more time with family and making some of these moves to spend some more time with my wife, but you've also made some moves to actually maximize the business. So let's talk about that for a moment. What are some things that you're doing to maximize the business to make more time for these other things? Totally taking advantage of what's, what's in front of you, right? So back in the early 2000s, we didn't have the ability to promote ourselves like we do today. Mm. Okay. It, it wasn't as resourceful. Um, I love the ability that I could validate myself. So in 2017, I kind of saw a Zillow taking off and I'm like, Hey, let me get on this review wagon. You know, the more, the more reviews I can get, the better validation I'll have. Right. And it kind of like stirred into 
YouTube, <laughs> you know, let's get the YouTube promoted, you know? So every person that I speak to, I let them know I got over 180 reviews on Zillow. I have over 5,000 subscribers to my YouTube channel. I have over 20 years experience in the mortgage industry. This is my office, you know? So like, we're always here, me, my team, you know, and I think having that experience to motivate you, to educate you, to inform you. Um, I don't know if we had all this then, you know, back, I remember uh, when the appraisals came over, they used to, they used to be uh, fo the photo with, you know, tape or, or uh, glue on the back of them. Now everything's digital. You know, when fax machines started to be, a, a resourceful tool. No one even uses those anymore. You know, so I think taking advantage of the technology, whether it's social media, um, you know, whether it's doing your own, you know, private ads in your community, I'm, st I'm still into the old school, you know, mentality of, you know, the seminars and the virtual seminars and getting in front of people. I think, I think th those are, those are really important thing issues, you know, to be able to validate yourself right away off the first conversation is different than what's your rate. You know, gives yeah, us a little it. edge. And I'm and I'm just walking through here on the uh, on Zillow, just just looking at all these kind of five star reviews. Darren gets it done. Uh, Fifteen years of working with Darren with one hundred percent success. Terms and details were spot on. Couldn't be any happier. Amazing mortgage broker. So talk to us a little bit about this. Uh, lay out a blueprint for people. I think you know whether you're talking about Zillow for for what you're doing in the mortgage space, or you're talking about sure. uh, Google Google My Business, getting the reviews there. Uh, it, it'll it'll cross over from from these different industries. So what have you done that's been sort of the secret to your success and getting you know people to respond? Obviously, you've worked with a, a lot of people, which is amazing, uh, but you've also gotten them to go on and comment and uh, get yeah. those reviews, which I think is a struggle for many people operating within their business. I mean, I just, I, I'm really real. And especially with a first time home buyer who I've never spoken to in their lives, they, they come to me with a lot of good questions, but a lot of them are internet questions. And I say, this isn't a robot transaction. Let's talk to you like real. I'm going to tell you exactly what you'll need. I'll get you prepped and ready so that when you find the house, you know, you can actually buy the house. Like, and it's not BS. Like we can get into deep, deep details. And I think just understanding and analyzing the deal up front and being real with people. Some of those reviews, I've worked with those people for nine, 10 months, a year. You know, some people know and they find the house right away and then they don't know how to get the money into their account or they, they have a, a, a weird scenario and one person told them one thing. I just really just try to be as real as possible. Forget about whatever anybody else did. You know, it's like the old expression, Cameron, like forget about what everybody says and thinks, just do, right? It's kind of the same scenario, like either take my advice or don't, but come to me with your questions. No, I, I think one thing that, that we may be kind of glancing over, because I think you're doing a really good job of actually getting, obviously it's it's one thing to do. I think a lot of people work well in their businesses. They do an awesome job. But what is, how are you getting them to follow through and do that commentary and review on Zillow? So, so basically at the end of, they're the homeowner, they bought the house. You know, I can't attend the closings like I used to with COVID. There's a lot of restrictions. So, um, you know, we just have a peaceful call after I give them a few days, you know, just so in case they build up some questions, you know, which a lot of people have and, um, you know, just being there, answering the phone, being the guy that picks up the phone at nine so o'clock on you, a Sunday you, night. In addition to doing that follow up, are you also emailing them the link to, to do the review or asking them to do the review online in the conversation? What's the, what's the tactic, tactic or so, strategy there? So the company has that automated system that reaches out and there's no doubt about it, but I'm almost positive I have that individual conversation with most people, you know, and I'm sending them an article on myself, you know, and um, Chris, 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 just uh, Chris there. There he is right there. what's up, Darren? Um, so, um, you know, we, I really have that conversation with them and then I send them an article on myself. So they can send that out to their friends. I try to associate social media with them. I say, listen, I'm going to send you a Zillow link. Please give me a five star review. You know, write about your experience. You know, I, I love I love that you send out the article on them. I think that's something that people can really take away. I know I'm taking away writing it down now, but 
giving somebody some kind of literature on yeah. you post transaction, right? A lot of people will do do stuff in terms of sending out advertising material pre transaction, but you're following up and saying, you know, hey, this is this is who I am. Exactly. Please, please refer me out if you had a good experience, um, that kind of thing. I love that, and I think one of the things that I I um, have noticed in doing this show is not enough people have taken taken their work and documented it in photos and literature, right? They can talk about what they do, but they haven't written down. And I'm going to raise my hand on that as well. Yeah, for sure. Doing doing more work on the the written aspects, the pieces, so that you can get that out and making it easy, right? So it's not like you're creating a custom email each time you're doing this follow-up because as you scale, right, and you want to grow, having that stuff ready, um, not only for you to use it, but if you're working with assistance, that sort of thing that they can use that stuff as well. I think that's, that's and a then great- you, Cameron, give me the platform to talk to my past clients, you know, and I thank everyone for giving me those reviews. And those are the people that have our vision. Mm-hmm. They understand. Now they may have had to buy the house because of the scenario they're in, but hopefully in that future, you know, whether it's five years, 10 years, even 20 years, because I talked about shoveling snow at 70, right? So that would be with 29 more years, 28 more years, you know, but that's a whole lifetime for me, you know, so why not set myself up now, help others, let's become economy proof, let's become recession proof so that we're all together in this. When that time comes, we know where to turn. In 2008, we didn't, there was no social media. People were standing outside trying to get their money out of the bank. You know, that there was a collapse. I think that the government has done a better job Um educated. The CFPB is coming out and making sure the services are ready. Now, I know that there was an article the other day that complaints were up. You know, um, that's going to happen. You know, so it gives the mortgage industry bad press. But like like you said, and you repeated my words, call your clients after. Find out, like, what's up? Like, are you, what happened? Sometimes they just want to know where they make their payment. And I know you're not the guy for it, but set them up with it. They'll remember that forever. You know, and um, I, I, I want to just chime in on that because I see that so many times. Whether it's an insurance company I'm working with or an insurance broker or yep. I'm working with some other company where it's a, a go-between. And even with some of the companies that aren't even go-betweens, just uh, you know, from initial sales, you're talking about especially larger companies. Okay, you're the person that's selling me the product. So you've sold me on it. And yeah. now you, you, you hand me off to somebody. We've created the relationship. We've established the trust. And now you hand me off to somebody else. And I'm Correct. like, or what am I doing? What number am I calling? Where am I going? You know, if you got to do that for the scale of your organization, have a process and a system to make sure that if there has to be a handoff, that you're doing it in a really gentle way, in a way that really, you know, makes sure that that relationship that was started is maintained. Because we all know what happens to a company if that trust. That quality no over quantity, right? Quality over quantity. You don't need to do it the other way. Like you can do it the right way and people, it, it's, a, it's, I feel like it's what the things we didn't do. See, you know, like what, what's the old Darren, the new Darren telling the old Darren, or what do you want to do when you grow up? I think I still want to do this, but we could just do it in the right way. We could do it in the right manner. Just really educate people really like, don't just try to sell them a house just because it's a $500,000 house and it could be a $10,000 commission. That doesn't make the right to sell them the house. You know, well, and, and let's and let's dig a little bit in this because you're talking about the the real estate market and the mortgage yeah. piece of it. Um, talk to me a little bit about before we jump into that full full fledged. You're talking about recession proof. So, what are a couple of different things that you would say to somebody they're looking to go out and and buy a house? Now, I think. Everybody knows what the market is right now. It's a seller's market for sure, right? There's less inventory. Right. There's more people buying, uh, that sort of thing. And in some ways, people are desperate, da, 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 whatever, however you want to say it. But what what would be your approach? You're looking to get into property, but you want to make sure you're recession-proof. What is the approach? So, 
So two things are going to happen right now, right? You're either going to overpay for a home or you're not going to get it. That's been the trend, right? So, so those two things have to come into play, right? If you overpay for a house, my theory is you have to want to buy the home. You have to want to really love it. Don't just get into it. Now, the theory also is hold, right? And then sell, right? We're going to buy and then hold, not wait, wait, wait. And I think the more, the more influence that you get in waiting that there's going to be a good deal, the less possibility you're going to buy a house, right? So we definitely want to buy and then hold. Um, and, and that'll probably keep your price down a little bit. It's hard to determine where and speculate, you know, again, I, I'm trying to get recession proof. So how do you do that? One, definitely don't go beyond your means. I mean, there's no doubt about it. If you think your price range is 2,500 and you're paying a thousand or 1,500 in rent right now and that big jump, it's not just the mortgage. You know, there's other utilities. There's, uh, there's other expenses involved. There are things you're going to need moving. The cost of moving now, if you're moving from an apartment or a home and you've lived there for so long, you need a dumpster. You need, there are things that people don't realize about buying a home that still you, you need more than just, Hey, I got 10 grand. I want to buy, you know? So, so in terms of recession proof, what do you do? If you know you're buying a house, don't go and buy a car too. At the same time, you know, the, those are things that you really shouldn't do. Now, does everybody listen? No. People think they, it's like worse. They buy the house, then they buy the nice car, and then they buy the really nice car, right? You don't need well, that. And then, and then it gets back to kind of a part of the conversation that we started earlier. And I just want to shout out, we had we had Christian Cooley uh, on here and Braden Daniels uh, saying great insight on home buying. But going back to the idea that living within your means, because I know one of the things, you know, and, and you know, right now, me and my wife, we rent a nice house. Uh, we haven't made that move to buying. And one of the reasons that's sort of kept us from buying is making sure that we have all our ducks in a row, that we have money saved. We, we don't want to get into a situation exactly. where we're going to be uh, paying out and can't over, right? Can't do over and above what we might be paying out in mortgage and whatever uh, unexpected costs uh, that right. might come up with the house, whether that be the roof or some other crazy uh, piece of, because once you buy the house, now you, now you own it. And if you want to live there, you got to, you know, keep it, keep it up and you can't depend on, you know, an owner or, or someone else to come in and rescue. Or loans or credit cards, you know, and those are the, keeping out of debt, you know, and that's the recession proof. So if you have to buy a house to go to Home Depot and spend 10 grand, that's not the way to do it. <laughs> okay. You know, so, so what do you do? You keep saving, right? You keep saving and you work on change. You maybe not buying is the way like you're doing save. And then when that time comes and if it is a recession, you have cash, right. To go and buy a home. In, yeah, in, and, I, and I think that's that's like the big key and secret. And I talk about this in people building their businesses, right? You know, you, you got to have, you know, let's say you have kind of any kind of regular structure of business that I want this to be applicable to the, the most amount of people. But, you know, you have your labor costs, you have your uh, cost of goods, right? So whatever you you, yep. you sell, you, you have expenses that go along with that. And then you build in above the cost of, of running the business and the labor costs, right? Um, so whatever products, you know, you have a deli, you have whatever. For me, I have staff. So you have your labor costs, you have your operating expenses, and then you want to build in a uh, profit margin. You want to you know, have a, a separate amount for taxes and all that kind of stuff. You want to build in all these buckets. And then even above your labor and above your office expenses and your taxes, insurance, all that stuff, you want to have your profit and then you want to have capital savings, right? So it's, you know, people aren't charging usually enough for their services or their products so that they can not only clear a profit, but also put money back into the business so that they can actually scale it. And what that right. looks like in a household, right, is making sure that not only are you clearing enough to cover your expenses and put a little bit of money into like the, the savings fund for like the six month emergency fund. Right. Which, 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 but, which in different places, that six month emergency funds different, right? You know, New York's going to be different than South Carolina. You know, just the taxes are different. So that fund is just 
You don't right. need and, as and, much and, and so many people don't do that. And then and what I'm saying, which is going to blow, you know, people who, who aren't even doing that. All right. Now you got your emergency fund and then you got your other savings account, which is your cap. So if you got your business capital savings, right. right, that's 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 just money that you're putting that you can leverage towards a house, towards car, if it's for the business, for a building, for the, a van, for all the different things that would go into the business. And that's how the real that's how the real money game works. Right. So you're having mm -hmm. these buckets of money and everybody's like, well, I'm not making enough money. But how do you make enough money by thinking about these things and making sure that you're yes. filling each bucket? Right? And, and, and by doing nothing is probably the worst thing to do. Because even at the end of the day, right, you could pay off a little bit of debt along the way. That's just less debt that you have, right? So not everybody has the ability to save. We, How do you get to save now then? That's the question. That's the question you should be asking. So there's one thing you didn't add in that, and that's marketing. You didn't mention marketing costs, right? So why does the big player win, right? Like the, the rocket mortgages and now the loan depots, like... Why do those guys become such a big player in the spot? Because they have more money. They don't even employ the most knowledgeable people. Okay, so so that's a whole nother topic, right? But let's get back to recession and, and economy proof, right? So if you're going, well, I, I, and, I, and, I'll, and I'll just chime in on to to put an exclamation point on it, right? If you're not building in time and money towards marketing. Right. We were talking about yeah. the follow up, the materials that you would send out on those post calls. That's going to be the major differentiator. Are you getting the Google My Business reviews? Are you getting the Zillow reviews? Are you putting yeah. time? And inevitably, time equates with some kind of money piece to it, whether you're hiring other folks or just spending your own time, which means you're not spending time on something else. Right. Which means money is involved one way or another. But yeah. that time and money on that marketing aspect, if you're not putting work on building the word of mouth, getting the marketing materials, whether you're doing it yourself or paying somebody to do it, what does your future business look like? Are you always in that mode of always just- So like, you know, okay, we do mortgages, right? But what are you good at? Like, are you good at repairing people's credit? Are you good at analyzing their savings and figuring out like what the next game plan is after you get them into the home? Are you good at prepping them? Hey, you don't need an engineer just yet. Look, there's a bunch of pipes here that are leaking. Over there, the, the cement's cracking, like most obvious things. But instead of selling them, look at them, right? But the problem is, again, the time. We run out of time. We don't have enough time. I need to make enough and and I, Again, I'm 41 going on 42. I've hit rock bottom. Um, I came from nothing. So it's not like I'm entitled. Um, I lived through this COVID scenario. My kids are remote right now. Even after trying to figure out, you know, um, maybe homeschooling them would have been a better option in the future. Um, so so uh, there, there was a lot that's gone on. And I can tell you that 100 days that I spent with my family at the dining room table working, um, was the closest I've gotten and the most meals that I've eaten at home. And it just made me realize that's where I got to be all the time, you know, and when they grow up, maybe I'll grow up, you know, but for now, I feel like that's the motion. Spend the money as you get older, you know, you'll have it. And, and, and we spent it when we were younger, right? We had everything that we wanted and now you're time, I'm going to put my time in. I'm going to plant my seeds for my kids. I'm going to educate other, other people on how to not overspend. Don't do what I did. Don't, don't have a $3 million bankruptcy. It's no good. It's no good on the body. All right. And doing it the right way, like the slow and steady wins the race is the right way to do it. And, and when, talk to us and talk to us. Cause I think this will be helpful to some people. I was hopeful when, when we were talking story in the beginning that you kind of go through some of this stuff because I know a little bit about your story. But talk to us about how you got in that deep, right? How did it, how did it, you know, because I think a lot of people are under the impression that I would never, it would never happen to me. Never, right? never, right? right? It would never, never, never happen to me. So how, how, did, how, how did it get that deep for you? And then I think the other interesting thing is how did you pull yourself out, right? How did how did you come back for it? Because I know people are, are are in that journey right now. So so 
I'm definitely, I did not live by positive things happen to positive people. I can tell you that. Um, I was definitely a, a live by the moment type of guy. So and basically I was 20 years old. I made more money than I've ever seen in my life. Um, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. And I just spent more money than I made, you know? So between credit card debt and then I bought one house I refinanced it, pulled the cash out, bought two more, refinanced it, pulled the cash out. I, I mean, I had owned 20 houses before I was 25 years old. You know, so I learned from the people around me, the, the experienced guys, but they were doing it a little differently. They weren't leveraging themselves like I was, hoping on speculation. I, I mean, I literally would get lines of a line of credit from someplace. I, I would, you know, take that money and pay another debt off. It it was, it was a very difficult process. But at the same time, I was, I thought I was making money doing it. Why? Because I had the nice things, the expensive cars, the nice suits, the, the money in the bank. But at the same time, it left at just as fast. They're hanging out. Even when I had my son, it didn't really slow down. It was, um, it was still very constant. So how did you learn? Um, well, in 2008, when the bank stopped lending money and you stopped really getting a paycheck, you, you just had to recreate yourself. You had to find something that, that was close enough to you that can help you make money. There really wasn't much. It, the mortgage was slow and steady um, in 2016 and 17, and it started to kind of pull its way out. And then I had a bankruptcy in 2016. Um, I did a chapter seven. It was close to $3 million. And you know what? I made sure I didn't fall back into that same credit card debt again. I bought um, a, a, a car. I leased a car that was economical, a 200 something dollar a month. It wasn't seven, but you, it doesn't just stop there. You know, the insurance is more expensive too now, you know, and I packed my own lunches instead of, you know, went and bought a $10 or $12 salad. You know, it just, and, those and little that, changes. And, and, and let me ask that question, right? So I think a lot of people, when they're examining these kind of changes in their life, right? And because you're talking about situation, I was watching the movie uh, Hardball the other day with Keanu Reeves <laughs> and uh, a young Michael uh, B. Jordan uh, in the movie. Uh, and, you know, he's, he's, he's into the, the, the bookies, right? He's gambling on bets and he's living this lifestyle of, you know, I'm going to, you know, take this, this money out over here, bet on it, and then I'll pay off my loan over there. Not a good strategy, uh, for anyone. Yeah, right. Yeah. But he's, he's doing that kind of thing. And then he's sort of getting to this breaking point of like, man, this isn't the way, uh, that I need to live. And, and so he stops and it's a movie. So it's a little, you know, Idyllic in you know what? None of that ever happens because they take the money and they actually gamble with it. You know, I gambled my entire life. I will not gamble anymore. I don't bet on anything. I don't even, it's, it, it is no fixation anymore. There's no fixation to go to the casino. Well, that, yeah, but that, that's what I was talking about. That you were, you were gambling, taking the money from here from, you, you're, and you're saying, I'm going to get it back percent. and I'm going to get it back and I'm going to get it back. It's going to happen. And then you go through this transition and you start saying, all right, I'm going to not live that lifestyle. And then you start doing things that are very humble, right? right? Packing the lunches. But I think a lot of people don't do that, right? They say, well, you know what? It's not going to save that much money, but it obviously made a difference and an impact in your life. Well, just not financially necessarily, but emotionally, you know, physically it does something to you, you know, when, you know, other guys can go to a restaurant and you just know you can't afford it. It's just not in your mix. It's either doing that or putting food on your table for your son, right? So you start having to think, and then I had my daughter, you know, so now I have to feed more mouths, you know, and it just, you do whatever you can, man, to continue going. I was working 14, 15 hour days just to recreate myself. I would do my social media and my marketing, you know, at four or 5 a.m., do my openings at five and 6 a.m., you know, so finding the company that I have now, I'm fortunate enough to be able to get out of those dinosaur days. And with Total Mortgage, it gave me that technology push. All right. They were way more tech savvy. They had the same vision that I had with the Zillow. And that's what I was getting to, you know, where I saw the Envision with Zillow. I wrote, you know, hey, I can get reviews. I can validate myself. And let me get to a place where, you know, th that's part of what I talk about every day. You know, and, and I was just consistent, man. Every day I did the same thing day in and day out. You know, it wasn't the insanity trade. It was consistency. And I, and I worked with the right people, friends, family members, people that I entrusted 
to take it to another level. And, you know, I'm fortunate enough to be in this, in this spot now, and I'm fortunate enough to be with an awesome company, Total Mortgage, you know, and, um, and talk to us. So, so, so there are big reason why we're out of, you know, the banking industry is a big reason now why we're out of the, the, the whole crisis. So we, we started kind of talking down this journey about you being in Long Island, based in Long Island, going through some of these struggles. You've gone through the bankruptcy thing. You right. pushed through. You got you got a great partnership in Total Mortgage. You've you've been able to push through because I think you know something that not everybody realizes. If you're an entrepreneur, business owner, even though you may be partnered with a company like Total Mortgage, you know, for a lot of folks that are in the sales, insurance, even if you're partnered with a company, a lot of it is on you. You're your own yeah, sales definitely. team, your own marketing right. team, you know, you're, you're you're pulling through a lot of things on your own. You're the brand, you're Mr. Mortgage Guru, you know, and that's how we want people to remember us. You know, you could, that's the website, MrMortgageGuru.com or MrTotalMortgage.com, you know, so which like- I, Which I love what you've done from a branding perspective, which I think- It makes should, it easy. While, while we're talking about that, because the next thing I'm going to talk about is is uh, moving to South Carolina. So talk to yeah. us about um, where where this whole idea because I think a lot of people are looking for their uh, you know man in the yellow hat, right? So if yeah, you know Curious definitely. George, right, you know who the man in the yellow hat is. You don't even know the name, but you know who the man in the yellow hat is. The image comes to mind, and you've sort of done that with your brand with Mister Mortgage Guru. So yep. how did you go about this? Because I think a lot of people are still looking for this. Like, how do I brand myself? How do I set myself up? How do I grow a YouTube channel? How do I you know make sure that people recognize me, know me, like me, trust me? Start somewhere with a platform. Pick one. It, it doesn't matter what it is. It's just a point of validation. Align yourself up with, with people that are going to help you, that care, that li- want to listen to your story. They don't like you because you're the, you, you do mortgages. You know, like they like you because they, you're fun to hang out with. You, you, you add to value. You know, you, okay, yeah, uh, you, you introduce me to people, but at the same time, you know, we all work together. We have an amazing team here at my company. But, but at the same time, um, you know, you, you could get lost, you know, w- w- where you're at, you know, just being by yourself all the time, you know? I love that. And so, so you've done that. You've made some moves. You've settled on a hashtag, Mr. Mortgage Guru. What was behind, like, committing? Because I think that's the big thing for folks. Because yeah. it can come off as, like, corny. It can come off as, like... Sure. Um, uh, you know, what is that? But then you stick with it and suddenly it's a thing. So what was the thing that sort of made you say, you know, this is, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to be. When I saw the, the memberships and the subscribers rising and I knew I was sending my message out, I speak to a, a few hundred people a week, at least, you know, um, and, and how do you do that? System? What, how, what's the commitment there? really sitting at this desk here the phone won't stop ringing all day we have a good team we set appointments there's there's a lot of different angles that we take you know to make those those phones ring right but at the same time um take your one platform run with the platform let everybody know how much you have it doesn't matter if you have five reviews if you have 10 reviews talk about it because it'll only go up the, the number of reviews will increase. Even if somebody writes a bad review, the other ones supersede it. They, there's always a reason. Not everybody can be happy with your services. It's just part of what we do. But again, what do you do best? What is it that you do as a mortgage professional? Do you help people get into a house? Do you do reverse mortgages? Do you do rehab loans? Are you good with bad credit? Are you good with helping people save money? You know, people come to me all the time, hey, Darren, I got no money. Can I buy a house? No. You cannot. You can't have zero dollars and buy a house. Yeah, but there are these, uh, you know, programs that allow. Okay, but you still can't buy a house with no money. So understand, like, there's. Are you? There's are you money. can, but is it a good idea? <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. And and but those are the paths that that we're coursing. So how did we get to South Carolina? Right. So over the last few years, talking about economy proof, you know, not where the market was at today, where it was at 2017, 18. You know, we tried to figure out where on the East Coast can we live that's got good schools, good population, and that the houses are really decently priced. 
right? Taxes are fairly low, property values are low, um, in, in places that have good school districts. And we just searched. We went all the way down the chain, Virginia. We went down to the Carolinas. Um, uh, and we went as far as Georgia even, you know, and we just, we didn't really find the place that, that soothed us. There were a lot of recommendations. Um, Florida was just way too hot for us when we first went there, you know, so we knew we didn't want to go back there, but school district was a, was a plus for us. That's what we were really looking for. So we found this little place, Lake Murray, right. And, um, around Lake Murray has a surrounding school districts of all eights, nines, and tens, you know, and like the property values are economically priced. I mean, if I tell you, you could get a house for 250,000, you know, you put down 20%, your payments are just about a grand. You'd say, what am I doing? You know, like, how can and I actually do that? that? For everybody that's not in the Northeast, that, that, those numbers sound no. like a dream because anything in the Northeast here, Long Island, Westchester, where I am, you know, you're talking about $500,000 and above, especially if you have a family yeah. uh, and you're trying to do anything that, that looks like something and it is in a good school, school district. I live in Valhalla, New York, and school district definitely runs our decision making True. process. We got family that lives around us. So, you know, having that, you know, you're looking at what you're looking at. And if you want those things, you got to pay for it. I love that you found a place that uh, fits right. the needs, has a beautiful setting, making me salivate. Sounds great to me. You know, and, and, and again, it's, it, if you have family, you know, it's harder to do those changes. Con consistency is definitely the key. There's no doubt about that. It, yeah. I'll, I'll shout out Yolanda Chin checking in on, on LinkedIn, Justin, uh, the crust giving us the fire symbols, uh, David Pastoru <laughs> checking in. That's my guy. Uh, loving this. Our first LinkedIn ever, everybody. Thank you so much for, for commenting, keeping it up. Sure. This Dev Live is official on LinkedIn Live now. Glad that Darren, <laughs> Darren was our first person. He's uh, in the Long Island area, going down to South Carolina, find, found a beautiful place. Yep. Darren, uh, before we close this thing out, I, something that I've gotten to, I'm trying to put some more structural pieces into this. What is a book that you're currently reading, right? And what is a book that you would recommend to people to read? Oh man, that is, uh, that, that, that's a good and, and, question. And, so, and you have a customer here that, that's looking <laughs> to, to, to move next to you. Yeah. So let, let, let Amy, who's checking in from uh, Rockland County, Amy Kanarek uh, with the Amy, Amy Kanarek uh, Designs. One of my one of my um, New Year's resolutions was to was to read more. That was mm -hmm. actually that was actually one of my New Year's resolutions. Um, uh, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna tell you the the Bruce Lee book, The Warrior Within. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 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 I started to read it. I haven't finished it yet, um, but that that's 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 my book of desire right now. I, I promised myself I would learn how to meditate. Um, Love so, that. so, so I've been practicing that a little bit. Um, my dog is a huge contribute to what I do. Listen, I'd love to quit my job and work with puppies all day. That would be it. If we could figure that out. Well, we're we're going to work on that for you. We're going to get some people uh, to follow up with, you guys with some opportunities here. <laughs> no, no, no. That's, that's in the after world. That's, that's after. But, um, but yeah, you know, that, that's, that's where I'm at with the book. Uh, yeah. And, and what's, a, what's a book or a resource that you would really recommend to people? Something that maybe you uh, kind of refer back to or uh, sort of suggest to people all the time. So, um, I get I, I I don't have that answer, honestly, Cameron. I'm I'm not good with with that end of it. Um, I'm not. Right, so talk, to, talk to me. Talk to me, about, talk to me about another thing. What's a, a go to song? Uh, in your rotation that you 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 uh, get into that uh, makes you feel good. All right, so we we definitely we can't never stop with jump around. That's the song. Jump around the house of pain. When that yep. comes on on the radio, you're just like, wait, what other song did these guys do? Definitely have my generation. Just just so you know, I'm, I'm turning uh, forty. Where am I? I'm turning 43 in July. So oh, nice. uh, that, that's right in my wheelhouse, House of Pain, Bad Boy Records uh, stuff, all the 90s stuff. That's that's all my wheelhouse. So uh, very, very fun stuff there. And House of Pain is always a good one. Jumping around. All right. Yeah, there we go. Uh, 
So talk to us about uh, if folks want to reach out to you, who would you like to contact you? Where are you trying to develop? Sure. I mean, anywhere really in the South Carolina area, we're really trying to promote some local businesses over there. Um, you, you know, I am from Long Island. This is where my roots are. I'm always looking to grow here in Huntington and, and Greenlawn. Okay. You know, my kids, one of my kids graduated high school here. So um, I, I coach um, soccer here. So those are our areas, you know, um, but going forward, I, I want to help people, you know, with, with their questions that you can't get from like the, the larger banks, you know, come to me. You could go to my website, my emails everywhere. You could Google me. I mean, 844-772-LOAN is the number. I mean, whatever you want to do, we try to make it as easy as possible for everyone. You know, and no question stupid. You, you, just because you got bad credit and no money, that doesn't mean that you're not, you're not like a person, you know, and, and you shouldn't, you shouldn't get those, those answers, you know, and, and I feel like that because I was turned away. Let me give you a fast, quick story of what happened recently. Okay. So I wore my Bobby Boucher Jersey, my football Jersey with a hoodie with my South Carolina hat. Okay. I walked into Volkswagen on a Sunday because my, my son needed his car was up. His lease was up. So he needed a new car. So we walked in there together. My son is 30. I'm 41. So, you know, we're both, it looks like we're buddies hanging out, going to get a car. I didn't introduce myself in any way, except I said, Hey, I got this letter in the mail. Can you help me out? So the guy says, yeah, come on down. Well, first he's staring at the letter. And I said, have you never seen this letter? Your company sent it to me. He goes, yeah, of course I have. I said, okay, perfect. So can we just go and talk? So he brings up the account. He says, you're paying X, Y, Z now. This is what I could do for you. And I said, well, that's not really what I was expecting. And he goes, well, what were you expecting? I said, I honestly, it doesn't even matter at this point. I feel, I feel like you kind of humiliated me in front of my son here. Oh, he's your son? I said, yeah, you know, you, you, you're, the, we're trying to help them out here and get them lower payments and you're not really doing the right thing. I, at least I don't feel like you are. And he's like, well, okay, well, he tried to get like information out of me more and more. And I just was at a different point and he had us standing there for a little while, you know, to give us a really bad deal. So I said, Kevin, watch this. So we go home, I get changed and I put on like a nice college shirt with a polo. I do my hair put on some slacks and shoes and I go into the Volkswagen in uh, Smithtown. Let me tell you, the guy showed me the whole lot. Let me get in the cars, explain to me the different lines on like the R line and the S line. And, and I just had that different experience, man. And it was just like, not only do you know how to sell cars, but you know how to like explain them and do your job. And like, I don't know. So you have to, you're, you're here to help me. You know, they gave me a good deal a fair shake. And I left. And it's a shame because Chris said he put on his tie earlier, right? It's a shame that that image is what we see every day, you know, and I was a suit and tie guy for so long, man. You would never find me in the office without a pair of slacks. Okay. But COVID's kind of changed my, my style, my, my mentality. And, you know, I, you see the haircut a little bit. This is me. I don't go to the barber anymore. This is one full year. <laughs> This is a full year of me cutting my hair. Okay, wow. so, so this is just, um, I guess, a, a different point in my life that I'm at. You know, like we always said, you know, it's not what other people think of you. You know, I care only what my kids think of me, and I want to do good in the world. You know, it's be kind to yourself and everyone around you. It's on every one of my emails, you know, and live by that. Then the economy proof and the recession proof will come after that. But if you're one for money and you don't care how you spend, this isn't for you. Just it's all good. You know, yeah, I, I think uh, I think it's a really big, important point that you make. I, you know, uh, I know a lot of people when uh, they're looking at me, they're looking at suit and tie. And for me, you know, I wear a suit and tie because I like it. Uh, I dig it. And uh, I've actually lost jobs because I was dressed up too much. Yeah, it didn't match the, the, the culture of, of the company. And it's like, you know, for me, it wasn't the place, you know, I wasn't going to be happy there. Right. You know, because that yeah. was me. Um, and I think you got other people that are on the other end of that, right? Where they dress up, you know, and, and, uh, they get the job and they're not happy. I love it. it doesn't fit their culture. Right. But I think, you know, we're getting to a place where there's, it's an abundant world. And I think where we get into the challenge and I was talking about this the other day is that, you know, we see a successful business over there, guys selling mangoes on the corner. He's got customers coming to him. Not only do we 
want to copy that business. All right, well, I'm going to sell. He's making money. I'm going to sell mangoes. You're going to go stand right next to him on the corner uh, instead of saying, well, either I can sell mangoes in a different place. There's more than enough business for, for us. But it's like it's not about actually seeing something in the world, going out and doing it yourself. I want to do exactly what the other person doing with the exact same amount of success without actually looking at Hey, this is this is how this business works. This is how you actually build something. This is how I actually make it work for me in a way where I'm happy with it. At the end of the day, I'm doing exactly what I want to do in the way that I want to do it. So exactly. whether it's selling mortgages or going out and uh, playing with puppies, you got to find your <laughs> it, man, whatever it is. It's such <laughs> it a huge swing, but I'm telling you, uh, by the time I can go and play with the puppies, right, and work for the puppies, I'll have like forty something years experience i'll be married 40 years i'm already married 20 years you know so like this i hope there's a, a, so much more in my future that i i can do with my kids most importantly that other people can't do like my wife raised my kids not the nanny you know and like those fortunate things that that i i i just i can help other people recreate you know and give that opportunity you know Think outside the box. If everybody's going right, let them. Maybe like you go left and there's some stragglers there that like, you know, make you a millionaire if that's what you want to go and be, right? If that's your it's if that's your overall goal. Why is everybody chasing, you know, Elon Musk? Maybe go with like his right hand man. Maybe he's the right guy. <laughs> you know, you know, but but you know, you you expressed that before. I don't I don't really idle anyone that way. Um, it's, it's one reason why I, I don't really get into college sports. I don't, I don't, I know a lot of people would say it's the opposite, but, um, not much of, of an idler. Um, the, the people that, that I respect are those who do good with the community, bring back to the community. I, I get my prescription filled by a local pharmacy because that guy gives backpacks to, you know, the PAL here, you know, that's that that's what it's about man and the more people who can share that love share that kindness you know work with people that you actually like that you don't have to argue with every day you know um you know you, you can't argue with stupid people right they'll drag you down and beat you with experience right you know and that's that's the truth and if you live by that the rest of your values will come you know everybody's got to work right everybody's got to make money we all got it I want, I want to wrap this up. And I think one of the best ways to wrap it up is I think a point that you've kind of been hitting on over and over again is, you know, where do you choose to focus? Where do you choose to put your time? What are you actually working towards versus, you know, doing to hold up appearances for other people, right? So when you can focus on right. what you're doing for you, you know, you're going in a, in a good place. Uh, uh, Mitch, uh, Jacobs is chiming in here, uh, dropping a lot of comments. I, I gave him the uh, streamyard.com forward slash Facebook to allow access so we can see him here. But he says, yes, understand the company culture and determine if you are fit. Uh, due diligence is crucial. Yes, mic drop moment. Uh, Darren Kaplan uh, is so right. Know your personality, your gifts, your strengths, and be true to your values. Darren, I want to thank you for spending this time with us today. First ever. Thank you, man. Thank me. you. Thanks for uh, holding down a little bit of history. <laughs> number uh, one. There we go. Number one. There we go. Um, again, just mentioned for folks where they can reach you. I'll give you the solo spot and then we'll play off the BizDev theme. Thanks so much again for being on the show. Definitely. I appreciate all your time. Thank you, everyone. You can find me at MrMortgageGuru.com. All right. Remember, you can find me on my YouTube channel at YouTube.com forward slash Mr. Mortgage Guru, and it's 844-772-LOAN. And I um, so appreciate everybody. Thank you so much. Um, Cameron, thank you for having me also. Appreciate Pleasure, it. Brother. Take it easy. Be kind to yourself and everybody around you. And we'll BizDev Live. Live. Weekdays at 11 Eastern Time. BizDev Live. Live. Weekdays at 11 Eastern Time. BizD with C. C. Brought to you by Cameron T. T. Biz D with C. C. Brought to you by Cameron T. T. This is business development. Not even selling it. This is intelligent. If you watch it, I promise you benefit. Leadership and motivation. Empathy and inspiration. Leadership and motivation. Empathy and inspiration. Biz
Dev Live. Weekdays at 11 Eastern Time. Biz Dev Live. Weekdays at 11 Eastern Time. Biz D with C. Brought to you by Cameron T. Biz D with C.